Hey now, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but you can't start without me. I'm the host of the show. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday, September 26th. Now, as most of you know, we like to focus in on OTC and penny stocks, stocks that have some heat, some potential. Maybe they're already running. Maybe they're going to run, but these are the ones we're going to be looking at. Now, when I say penny stocks, I am referring to any stock under $5. Doesn't matter what market they're on, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC market. They're all fair game, and I love to trade them all. Now, this news over here, that's only OTC news, but it's juicy news. There's no public offerings in there, no financials. These are mergers, acquisitions, joint ventures, new contracts, new distribution deals, the juicy stuff, the stuff that makes the stocks run. We like to call those catalysts. You've got your oldest catalyst up at the top and your newest ones down here at the bottom. Now, I like to do all of my research on an OTC stock right here at the otcmarkets.com website. Most of you may not know it, but this is a business. otcmarkets.com website is on the OTC market. It has its own ticker, it escapes me at the moment, but you can invest in it, and this is how they make their money. There are certain things they do for the OTC companies that they get paid for, but the site itself is absolutely free for me and you so that we can keep up with legitimate information, no hype, no BS here. I like this site because it's updated every single day by Fiener and the SEC with all of that pertinent information we're constantly looking for. So there's no need to be running over to Google looking for information, sorting through decades of old stuff to find that most recent current piece of information. No, come here. I swear to God, you'll save so much time, which means you'll get more research done. I do a lot of it, folks. This is my shortcut right here. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Uh, it was just a few days ago. It was the second worst day of the year for the OTC market. She was as low as she had been uh, since March and before that, October. So our dollar volume, we're still not touching our old average of $2.1 billion. We haven't been there now in maybe three weeks. It's been a while, so we can't even call it an average anymore. So this is high compared to where we've been. $1.9 billion now is high. Uh, it's not a bragging number. I'm just saying it's higher than it's been. Share volume is low. Bloody hell. We've been trying to stay over $10 billion. We were there for three or four days, and it does make a difference on the market. It absolutely does. Uh, th this is anemic. You just can't even get out of bed. You've got no energy to do anything, and that's the way our market's been acting right now. Trades, well, there's a few more trades today. We've been doing about 250000 as the average, a little down, a little above. So we're still right there. Not a whole lot's changing, except maybe it's getting a little bit weaker. Our share volume is getting desperate. Now, in case you haven't noticed, maybe you've heard a lot of buzz online. Uh, this, it's a shorters market right now, folks. The market's falling. Big market's falling. OTC markets are falling. It doesn't matter how good the companies are doing. The market is falling. And shorters like to borrow shares so that they can make money on a falling market. Now, what do I mean by shorting? For those of you that don't know, shorting is a way to borrow shares from the broker. Now, where do they get those shares from? Me and you, people who own those shares but aren't selling them. They're just sitting there. And with the broker's permission, they borrow those shares. So what do they do with them after they borrow them? They sell them immediately. So let's say they borrow 100 shares of ABC and ABC is going for 10 bucks. They got $1,000. Now what they're hoping for is the market's going to fall. In a falling market, it is. Now just for ease sake, let's say it fell down to $5. Well, now he's going to put those shares back. He's got to buy them to put them back. He doesn't have them anymore. So now he buys them for half price, five bucks, and he gets to keep all the difference between the five and the 10. Keep that in his pocket, put the shares back. Well, what happens in a short squeeze is that the price starts to rise. Well, he bought them, he sold them for 10. If they go up to 11, well, he's out a dollar for every share. And if it keeps rising, it, he's got to pay more. And he's not the only one shorting. There's lots of people shorting. That's what makes the squeeze so incredible. And everybody has to start filling those shares back in or they're going to be losing more and more and more money. There's no ceiling on the loss for shorters. It can be incredible losses. So they start buying at an incredible rate, increasing the volume, getting excitement into the charts. And before you know it, you've got to run. And that's what's been happening. A lot of stocks have been being pushed. People have been finding stocks, PBS,
GLA, GTII, and they're pushing the stock up because there's a lot of shorters on them right now and there's not any growth on the market. So that is what's been happening. Now, what we're going to take a look at today are the hottest stocks on the OTC market. Uh, we're going to look at not just the volume and not just the percentage gain, which everybody looks at. But if you follow my show, my favorite piece of information here is the trades. How many trades has the company done? Because the number of trades is as close as you're going to get to how many people are trading that stock. And the more people trading it, the more price activity you're going to get. And that's where you're going to make your money. So let's jump on over to my favorite page, the current market. You come on up here, market activity, click current market. And that's going to bring you to a page that shows you the most active stocks on the entire market. And all you got to do is drill down with what it is you're interested in. Now, I was talking about shorting. Well, down here, they show you the biggest decliners. Well, most of us have no need to know who's losing the most because there's no way to make money on it. But if you're shorting the stock, this is vital information right here. You can see which stocks are falling, you know, how many trades there are, which I'm going to show you on advancers. But one thing I want to show you I have never shared with you before, this up here, the most active, you can't break this down by dollar. See, down here, we can go to just stocks over a dollar, stocks over a nickel, or all of them. Looking at our advancers, and I normally look at everything. I like subpenny stocks. But up here, it's the entire OTC market, all 12,000 plus securities. And you can see which stock made the absolute most money today selling. You can see the, the biggest percentage gains. HPIL had the biggest gains. Well, that came up from five, five zero one. Uh, dollar volume, share volume. This is incredible. You can see how many shares are being sold. BOMO here. BOMO had three quarters of a million roughly shares. That is Cruzani. Uh, they changed their ticker today. And then this is my column. This shows me how many trades a company has done in a day. Most stocks are doing one, two, four, six a day. I mean, that's it. Other companies are doing 20, 30, 40 if they've got some news and something's going on. But a stock that has investors' attentions, they're getting hundreds, thousands of trades, and those are the ones you want to focus in on. So you could go here, but this is stocks of all prices. You're going to see everything right now. These are all super cheap. But as I said, this is my favorite page. All Click this more button here and the whole page becomes just the advancers. Man, this is great, folks. This is the biggest gainer on the whole board, HPIL, and that's how it goes. Largest at the top and you can just start scrolling down and every time you click that more, it gives you the next page. How deep will it go? Well, it will go 12,509. It'll just keep going all the way to the absolute bottom. It just goes and goes and goes. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for stocks that are first over the triple zero price. I don't want anything triple zero. Occasionally, I will look at a triple zero eight or triple zero nine because that's as close as you're going to get to the double zeros where they pick up some momentum. The triple zeros don't move very fast. They can do a billion shares in a day and be the same price at the end of the day. So no, I don't really watch those. Um, I am looking for anything in the double zeros or up. I am also looking for anything with 50 trades or up. I mean, you can draw your own line anywhere you want, but this is the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's a tally, so I want to see at least 50 trades for the whole day. But this chart, this page here is available all day long. There is a 15-minute time delay on it. You can come over here about ew, five minutes to 10, and it's here. So it isn't going to help you find a trade from 9.30 from the bell till 10. That's a whole separate trading period of the day in my book. 9.30 to 10, that's one trade. I get out, I just get out 9 out of 10 times. And then I look for a second trade the second part of the day, which is the rest. And that's where this comes in. So I'll come over here and most of them, as you see right now, 1, 3, 4, 5, this is the end of the day, right? They didn't get a lot of trades. Some of them have 14, 12, 10. Well, in the morning, if you see 1, 2, 3, 14, 8, 12, check out the 14, 8, and 12. Come over here and click this, and it'll take you right to the page. Go to the news, as I'm going to show you. This is how I do my DD. This is how I do it quick. Just a real quick blur through there. See what the catalyst is. See if there's something you should be paying attention to. Me. 
<laughs> if I should be paying attention to. So I use this all day long and it's right up until the moment. So if you come at noon, you'll see these numbers getting bigger. So we are looking for anything over 50 trades and over a triple zero. We got a 64 trade here, but that is triple zero one, not interested in it. If you are, you can see all the information just as I do. You've also got this page on your own PC. I'm sure you got it on your mobile phone app too. All right, we've got one here, 157 trades. They did just about 3 million shares. This tells you how much money they made, $111,000, 66% gains today, and they're at four cents. CYIO, let's see what CYO is about. So now, without spending a lot of time, you just wanna get some flavor, what's going on, like reading a menu, you know? Sias Corporation is a publicly traded holding company with numerous subsidiary businesses, including Helio Lending, Helio Exchange, Randomly, and Choice Wellness. Through these operations, the company is focused on building a one-stop shop platform encompassing cryptocurrency and lending. Okay, so we know kind of what they do. What was the relative volume today? Uh, a big, about a just under 100 times, 338,000 to 3 million. Share structure, 108 million in the float. Now, what we're really interested in is the catalyst, though. That's all good information, but when you see a lot of trades, the whole point is, why is everyone looking at it? What's the point? 8.18.22, well, that's old news. You can get a lot of information here, but we're not here for that right now. 8.18, so we've got nothing current in the news. Jumping on over to disclosures, see if they've dropped any 8Ks or anything. Financial was last month. These are our SEC filings. I'm looking for anything right here as our dates. I don't see anything recent, 2014. So I've got nothing here at the OTC markets. No current news, no current uh, disclosures. So where am I going to go to get information? Twitter. Now I'm just taking a quick peek in here, see what they're doing for income. They are climbing here, 39,000. Remember all these pages, you got to add three zeros behind any of these numbers. And that's three quarter of a million. So that's a huge jump in revenues from one year to the next. Quarterly, eh, oops, something's going on. They made nothing last quarter. Oops. So what I do is I run over to Twitter. So let's just CYIO. Just let me make sure. Yeah, that's right. All right, CYIO getting found is just the beginning. Co-announced a variety of PRs will be dropped in the next few weeks. Exciting things ahead. Speculation. In a boring down market, you're looking for anything to put your hope on. And the company saying, we got big news coming. Well, people exaggerate in their mind what that big news could be. And they will just start bidding a price up because they got nothing else to do. Uh, the beast just getting started. It's a long downhill there. Accumulating the red while no one is talking about it. That's because there's nothing going on. What do they say? Low floater is ready. Did we see the float? Oh, it was 180 some million. So they consider that. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, this is uh, user friendly. I can't control everything that comes across the screen. Although I guess I could cut that out. Sayo, hope people are finally waking up to this beauty. This is just the beginning. Sayo, in this vid, Joshua Oshi explains a commitment to transparency and consistency, shareholder communication going forward. That's right, I did read this earlier today. They're going to do a one month touch on with their shareholders. So, communication and big news to come. Speculation. So, CYIO, let's go take a look at that chart. As is par for the course, we're going to do all of our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You can get this free just by signing up for the free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. All you got to do is keep your account open and they'll let you use this as often as you like, absolutely free. So that is CYIO six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here, about 12 cents, and a low bubble maybe 10 days ago of 0202. Just a squeak over two cents. She has not been over the 200 any of this time. She's gotten close to touching it, but would not get on top of that slippery slope to fall. But today she crushed it, folks. And look at the volume. Before I show you the close up, you can see the volume is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So we definitely have an increase here that is steady and she has crushed the 200 from way down here our 200 haul which is just like the 200 day sma but it puts more credence on current prices and it was sitting right on top of that and jumped 
right up on top of the 200 and sits up there beautifully now. And look at those technicals. You can't ask for anything better. RSI is screaming, still in the overbought. Our MACD has got a tsunami going on. We've had a change in direction. It was falling. And now it says, I'm not falling anymore. No, you're not. You're climbing fast. And look at that PPO. This is our percentage price oscillator. It's a lot like the MACD, but the MACD works with the whole price. Percentage price oscillator works with a percentage of the price. They're similar, but different enough that I like to use both. And these are ripping right now. Everything, as I said, is in launch mode. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. Price has been falling for the last four days. It's been under the 50, hit a low, a uh, new low, 0205. Not much above that other low bubble. So she is bouncing strong off that low bubble. Been climbing on speculation. We've got new PRs coming out and communication on a regular basis. That shouldn't be speculation. And we had a high here of about 4.4 cents. So that is 100% gain from the low to the high today. From the open close, you've got 75%. Now, this must have been really good for the investors. They feel comfortable with it. Most of the news we get, you get a nice run, and then we see it fall 50% at least. This did not, and it's not even news. It's more speculation and communication. And look, she virtually kept everything she threw on the table today with a little smile right there at the end of the day after market hours to just show you how she feels. Technicals. Our PPO is just about ready to start pointing up. Our MACD is about ready to do a crossover. Looks like it's thinking about it. And our RSI is in the mid 60s, which is a place of change. You are getting a price to push up in that area. And what I like to talk about is my PPO on the top, the per percentage price oscillator. I put that on the top and my ADX underneath it. And when I see the blue line and the red line separating, going like that, you can count on the price to go up. And I see this has been continuing on and this is starting to churn up. It looks good for a continuation, folks. I would keep my eye on CYIO. They did just have news. Things are developing and people are interested in the communication and the news press is coming up. So watch the volume. All right, let's jump on back to that list. Anybody remember where we were? Oh yeah, right there, CYIO. 157 trades, but look at this one. 6,066 trades. Folks, that's, that's I'm not gonna say unheard of, but that's huge, especially in this market. I've been having a hard time finding companies doing 1,000 trades a day. And this one I've been watching, this is GTII. I've been watching this for the last few days because it keeps showing up here on this page with a high number of trades. And I constantly monitor this page. And it was on Thursday, I think it had over 3,000 trades. Friday, it had over 4,000 trades, and today it's over 6,000 trades. Now, here's the thing. Of course, I did my DD and research. There is no recent catalyst. They did have some good, strong news that came out on the 14th, and they could easily have this running. No doubt about that. No doubt. But right now, there's nothing really going on, except I think it's being taken advantage of because it's a highly shorted stock. I told you, this is a shorters market right now. And if you can find a stock that has a lot of shorters borrowing shares on it and you get people starting to bid on that, and this has a good reason to go up right now, we can push that price up to where shorters start to panic and start buying more shares. And that is extra purchases on top of what we see. And before you know it, it starts to run fast. And I think that's what's going on with this. Consider it's had over 13,000 trades in the last three trading days. That is incredible. So let's jump on in GTII, learn a little bit about this company. GTI, Global Tech Industries Group, finished the day at $1.76 with 76% gains on the middle tier. That is great. That means they're auditing their financials, verified profile, transfer agent. That's validated information. You want that. Those look good. And independent directors, you need those to uplist, whether it be from the pink to the QB or if they're going to go to the NASDAQ, you have to have independent directors to uplist. If you're not going to uplist, you don't need them on the payroll. So maybe something's going on here. So what does GTII do? Well, they say Global Tech sets the stage and develops the assets to assimilate innovation and growth in emerging businesses on a global basis. Whatever is that worth to you. Let's see what the relative volume was today. 
pretty good increase. We went from a half a million roughly to over six million. Not a bad jump. Share structure. Uh, we got 64 million. That isn't a bad float. Getting better. Financials. Now we are here to actually find the catalyst, but we're just taking a quick look at everything else. 24,000 at the end of last year. Not much at all. And this year, they haven't made a penny. All right, let's see if we can find that catalyst. What's going on here? All right, 914. That is the last piece of news she had, and it was good news. We'll take a look at it. Global Tech Industries Group announced a share exchange agreement with Wildfire Media Corp. It is good news, but let's just look at our disclosures first before we jump over there. See if there's anything recent. 912. I always look in this column to see. I am looking for 8Ks, S1, stuff like that. Well, I'm looking for any filing, anything recent. Nothing here. So all we have is that news. So as I said, this news did come out September 14th. Global Tech Industries announces share exchange agreement with Wildfire Media Corp. Wildfire Media is a legal marketing company in the business of supporting law firms with client acquisition research, data-driven marketing, media planning, and analysis and client retention services. Now, the Wildfire shareholders have a post-closing earnout opportunity to earn an additional 100 million restricted shares if they reach a goal of $25 million in gross revenue. So they've got some extra incentive here. Second, there is a lockup on those shares. So if we run the price up, we don't have to worry about this new company selling all their shares and profiting off of our backs and it coming back down. It's not a pump and dump. They cannot sell their shares for one year. And the most important piece of information here is what the CEO of GTII says. As far as I'm concerned, what a CEO says is most relevant. That's the man at the wheel. He's driving your bus. You want to know where his head's at. Where is he taking you? He's going to make or break this deal. So he tells us here that when it comes to the potential impact to GTII and its shareholders of this long anticipated and negotiated agreement and partnership with Wildfire, I will say that this may be the most significant in the history of this company. We have been careful, we have been diligent, and we believe that this arrangement brings us closer than ever before to our long stated goal of uplisting to a national exchange, acquiring operations that bring substantial revenue to our bottom line and delivering value to our shareholders at an entirely new level. So this was news that came out two weeks ago. So the company's stock could be running on this and it is a legitimate reason. There are things developing, there's more information gonna come out obviously. But I think it's running right now because it's being shorted. I think that's what's got thousands of traders around it every day, weeks after this news came out. Doesn't that make more sense? So I think this is a stock we need to consider. Watch it. If people are going to pile onto it like AMC, God only knows what can happen and how many shorters, how many shares are out there. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. That is a six month, four hour chart for GTII. We got a high bubble here in the middle of the six months of just over two bucks and a low here of 43 cents. She took a drop after hitting that high. Serious, she was above the 200 in her own weird way, but here she completely lost it, hit that low. And ever since then, she has been bouncing her way back up to the 200 and she launched. She definitely launched here, got a big rip, went from uh, 66 cents up to $1.80. You're looking at almost 300% and has had some big bounces coming through here with lots of volume, tonnage of volume. And our technicals are just ripping and screaming, folks. If this was hurricane season, those are tsunamis coming. Let's take a look at that 20 day. I want to see a little bit here. So we've had some good pops here. Uh, that was about 18 days ago. She went from $0.60 cents to $1.10. You're looking at about 75% gains there. Crossed for two days, fell back down to the 200, under the 200, a little bit of a roll, and then she took off for these last three days. She's had a lot of volatility. Now you can see she bounces and bounces. Now she's bouncing uphill. Ride the bounce. You see she's come down, find that... SMA she wants to bounce off of. She's bouncing off the 20 day SMA right now. Looks like she's going to come back down and hit it again and hopefully get another bounce. Our technicals are very strong, but they all show this big drop right there. But it looks 
it looks ordinary, right? You just got to catch this pendulum on the right swing. So I'd keep my eye on GTII simply because there is a lot of possibility of a short squeeze. They're going to pay more to put those shares back and they have no idea how high it's going to get. That is not what a shorter wants. He needs that price to fall so he can put money in his pocket. So if the price keeps rising, we may see a lot more shorters selling their shares, pushing the price even more, getting us investors excited, seeing the volume build up as it has for the last three days. This is what we look for. That is the temperature right there. And it is a very hot temperature. So if you start seeing volume building up on this in the morning, you should be looking at your scans coming over here, even in the morning. This will read zero on TOS percentage change. They will not show me before the bell rings. However, I get that thing out of my way and I just bring up top volume. It doesn't, all, and this is what, what I get, a lot of empty. I got to scroll down to find it and then I can see who's doing the most volume and I look at the ask and the last and I look at the difference there instead of now I could go into each chart I can open up my scan over here and I can go through each chart very quickly through my list and I'm looking at that but I can also just look right here and see what the difference is between the ask and what last was yesterday and see what's getting a good gain all right let's jump on back to our list well, you can't lose that number. There's our six grand for GTII. Scrolling down to the next one over 50, we've got 57 here, but we don't meet our price criteria, MCOA at 0003. 54 trades here, uh, that one makes it. That one's at 0019 SPQS. Just with the gains today, it got out of the triple zeros. And she moved 10.5 million shares roughly. Let's take a look at SPQS, see what she's all about. All right, the company's in the process of a name change and a symbol change, having just liquidated its beverage operations and equipment. Flush with cash, we are looking into several up and coming industry spaces. Oh boy. Oh, they got a word here. The company is developing certain unicorn types of products. Unicorn is a stock that goes up a hundred fold, not a 10 banger, a hundred banger. So that's what they are. Flush with cash looking for a deal. So maybe we'll actually find a catalyst over here. What was their relative volume? Oh, more than triple. Well, almost triple 3.4 million to 10.4 million. Share structure, we're gonna get anything we can brag about here? <laughs> Not today. 1.5 billion, they shouldn't have any, well, we do have some money coming in, that's almost a half a million dollars at the end of last year. They doing anything quarterly? So they've sold everything, they've sold their beverage business, sold their equipment, and they're still making money. Look at that, not a bad deal. Disclosures, we got anything new over here? Uh, yeah, we do. Supplemental information, 2.6 billion share cancellation. Folks, there's your catalyst right there. 2.6 billion share cancellation. 8K, that's old. All right, I got to go back to the share structure, folks. 2.6 billion. All right, that's going to be off the outstanding. We'd be minus 2.6. So 41 minus 26, you're left with uh, 14, 15, 1.5, 1.5. Well, that's virtually the float. So what, they're getting rid of all the insider shares and leaving just the float? The float's not going to get smaller? I'd like to see this after it happens. I want to see if this affects the float. The float's big. You know, you can take the outstanding shares and drop that all you want. But if you don't affect the float, it isn't having a whole lot of effect on trading. It does on shareholder value. It absolutely does on shareholder value, but not on trading. And as day traders, we want that float as low as possible. And that's got a long ways to go. So they are dropping a ton of shares. So that's going to definitely be an incentive for the price to be moving. I don't see any new news here. Nope, nothing new. So let's just take this ticker and jump on over to our charts. SPQS, six month, four hour chart. Got a high bubble six months ago at 0072 and a low bubble of 0013. She has been under the 200 most of the time. Had a battle going on for a while here, but for the last month, month and a half, she's been losing that battle big time. And that's when she's hit her low bubble here. 
She has had a good tear-up day. She came out from underneath all the SMAs, which is where she's been for quite a while here, hitting that low bubble, but not getting above the first SMA, the nine day. She can't do anything till you get on top of that. But when she did, she rocketed past the 20, banged into the 50, and now climbed on top of the 50 and the 200 day haul. Good, strong positioning there. All of our technicals are very strong right now. Everything is pointing up. You can't go wrong if every osculator is pointing up. Let's take a look at that uh, five day, five minute. So we've had some volatility rocking through here. Today, she's actually pushed past her high over five days. That was right in this area. She finished today at 0019 uh, with yesterday's close at 0014. So she only had about 46% gains, though the technicals look real good. You can see everything is on a nice incline. Everything is on top of the right bars. All looks good. And our RSI is in the mid 60s. The volume has petered out here a little bit. It has been falling all day, but something's going on. They got a pocket full of money and they want to do something. They just took off 2.6 billion shares. That's definitely put some more value to the shares. I mean, literally, that gives more shareholder value. What was it? That's more than 50%. So that is like doubling the value of the shares right there because there's half as many shares out there. So they become worth twice as much. That's something to consider. All right, let's go take a look at our, our list again. All right, next one down the list. We got a 14 here for GOGR at 20 cents, 27, 13. Let me open up our page. Where are we at on percentage gains? We are all the way down to 38%. Folks, what would we looked at? Three or four that qualified for being over the triple zeros and having 50 or more trades for the whole day which I consider a low number. And we're already down to the mid 30s. All right, 25, 11, 10, 10, 13, 36. Look at this, oh my goodness. This is what I mean. We're into the 20%. There's a 420, I do like that number. <laughs> we got 53 million shares out of GEGI, all right, a company I'm familiar with. We'll take a look at this. This is a company that has value. Double zero three seven. she finished the day at with only 27.5% gains, but she moved a lot of shares. Company profile, Genesis Electronic Group is actively looking for autonomous solutions to license or acquire. We are assembling a team and advisors who are experts in the industry. We are looking for tested, proven machine learning, artificial intelligence. You know, I may have it wrong. I think it's G-E-G-R I was thinking of. Hey, that would be a good stock to look at if I had it wrong. <laughs> I think I do. Let's see what our relative volume is on this. 86 million. So she does a lot of shares every day. And today she did less than that. Sure did. 53 million. She came down, but she had gains. Interesting. Share structure. What do we got here? Goodness gracious, 1.1 billion shares. Now I know it says 307 million down here, but that's back in 2021. I don't trust that. What I would do, because if, if it was important to me, I would just jump into a disclosure. I would come over here to one of these and they would normally tell you in disclosures what the float is. I found this absent in 10Ks and 10Qs. I don't know why. They are audited by CPAs. Disclosures are just done by the management. Management thinks it's important. CPAs don't, I guess. So I would normally just jump in there to find out. Okay, fine, we'll jump in there and find out. Who said that? Was that you, Alan? I can count on Alan. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my search and I'm gonna go F-L-O-A-T and see, boom, number of shares in a public float as of June 30th, 1 billion shares. All right, so it's actually just a wee bit over 1 billion, 27 million. If you consider 27 million, just a wee bit over. Uh, so that's our float. And what did they say our float was over here? Uh, one point, well, that number's too big. It was 1.2, 1.027. So that's a little big and that's definitely too small. So at least you know where to look for the float when in doubt. Financials, is Geggy making any sort of money? Nothing on the yearly and nothing on the annual. We got any news? Genesis Electronic Group, uh, no, that is a couple weeks ago. 
So we've got absolutely nothing here. I didn't see any new disclosures while we were over there. Did they have one? No, that's 2014. So all we've really got is Twitter, and I didn't keep that window open. Why didn't I do that? All right, we're going back to Twitter the hard way, folks. I should have kept my window open for you. So we're going to search that out with the dollar sign G-E-G-I. Hopefully one of the thousands of people that trade stocks here have posted something for us. This is five hours ago. Always make sure to look at the date. Uh, G-E-G-I, my mindset hasn't changed. The company clearly has to get some things figured out. And we saw the run that happened based on the speculation. The speculation. I wonder what that was on. G-E-G-I, still here and just slowly re-adding. Many people don't know how to be patient and wait. Nothing has changed in the DD. Nothing has changed. Okay. Good morning, loyal. All right. Here we got their site. I just like to go to their own personal page. You get the best information from the horse's mouth, don't you? So the last tweet came out seven hours ago. Good morning, loyal GEGI shareholders. Just wanted to check in. We have a busy week ahead of us with a lot of work being completed. That's speculation, right? You got nothing to work on there. September 13th was the last time they talked to us. For those that didn't see our announcement on Friday, we want to reiterate our commitment that as we grow in the near future, we do not plan to reverse split the stock unless absolutely necessary. Well, that's not exactly a promise, is it? We value all our shareholders and their positions. So all we got is we're working hard and getting some work done. That's it. Speculation. Let's go see what the chart looks like for as little as we see. Now that is an interesting chart. That's a six month, four hour chart for GEGI. We got a low bubble way back here of triple zero eight and a high bubble here of just over two cents. But what really draws my attention is the volume spurts. We got a spurt here, a strong spurt here, and a lot of it here. Now, whether this is all over the same sort of news, the same sort of information, I don't know. But I do know it looks backwards to me. <laughs> on the OTC market, I'm used to seeing the huge jump on a virgin piece of news come out. Then they talk about a letter of intent being signed, and you'll get a medium-sized bump, because this is the second time we heard about it. And then when they close the deal, we get a little bump. No excitement when they actually close the deal. But this is going the opposite direction, so it's definitely piqued my curiosity. So my DD would be to correlate the dates on these jumps and those big surges of volume to see what the news was. We can see she had some huge runs here. This run here went from, uh, let's just call it double zero. Fuck. Now that's what I call an interesting chart. This is GEGI six month, four hour chart. Lots of volume coming in on these spurts. You got a bump here, a nice jump here, and then a wild surge right there, followed by a humongous tumble and fall. Now, I don't know if all of these surges in volume are about the same thing, the same sort of news. Are they building up on it? Is something getting closer and closer? Because honestly, that is the opposite of what I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing this going the opposite direction. The first time we hear about something, we all get excited and there's this huge surge that falls halfway or more. Then the next time they talk about it, signing the letter of intent, you get a decent jump. And then when they close the deal, when it's finally actually done, you get a little bump. That's what normally happens. So this is going opposite. It's definitely got my curiosity. So I would match the dates on these surges in volume to the news. See what is going on with this stock. She's had some nice jumps here. This second jump, she went from double zero one two. Let's just call that 12. Going from 12 to 68, you've got over 500% jump right there. They were excited, whatever was going on. She came all the way back down, right? Just like here, all the way back down, but she landed on the 200. Then she started slowly climbing and got a huge run here all the way up to oh, just a little over two cents. And this started down here at, well, that's almost a thousand percent gains, almost. And then she threw it all away and she should have probably landed on the 200. But falling so fast, she couldn't hit the brakes and she's gone under it and it is abnormal now. You can see she's normally above the 200, even above the 50. So right now she's trying to make a correction as far as I'm concerned. She's trying to get back up on top of that 200 because this is abnormal. It's the rubber ball underwater. It's going to come back up on the surface and float. 
And that's kind of what our technical show, our PPO is now showing trends of turning back up to get on top of the pink. We just had a crossover on the MACD and it's working its way back up to the signal line. ADX and the RSI, well, they've got some work to do. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view on this. So there's your high bubble. She has been falling for what, 17 days, all the way down to a low bubble here of uh, 0026. And she is just trying to crest the 50 day SMA. She needs to get on top of that. And normally you'll see the price bars get bigger. Just like that, right? You got these little itty bitty baby teeth. And as soon as it gets up on top of the SMAs, you see the strength come in those bars. So once she's firmly on top of the 50 day SMA, you should see a nice bar up there, which will get, give you a signal. And here we've got our blue line, our PPO going up and our ADX going down. Perfect sign of growth. This looks like it's ready to go. We have a crossover on our MACD and it's just crossing the signal line. I do see our green bars are coming down a wee bit, so she's struggling, but she is going the right direction. And our RSI is right at the 60 right now, 58, 59. So things look promising. I'd keep my eye on GI, GEGI. -E Speculation seems to be king right now. So that's really all there is to look at there. We are now under 30% gains, and I normally don't look under 30%. And we actually got through the entire list with time left over. Truth is, there are normally too many companies with 50 or more trades that I could cover down to 30%. Today, we did it with time left over. So with that time left over, I'm going to show you one more stock. This wasn't on that list anyways. This is on the NASDAQ. This is ticker DCRD. This is Decarbonization Plus Acquisition Corporation. This is a blank check company. It's a SPAC. They're $10 a share when they come on. They're always $10 a share until they close a deal. They have nothing going for them but a ticker. That's all they own. They have no business. They're a shell company and they're looking for a private company that wants to go public. And until they actually make a deal, the price of the stock doesn't normally move much. Well, today news came out. They tell us here that Hammerhead plans rare U.S. listing of Canadian gas producer in over a $1 billion SPAC deal. Hammerhead Resources plans to list on the NASDAQ by merging with blank check company Decarbonization Plus Acquisition Corps, ticker DCRD. The value of the deal in Canadian dollars is $1.4 billion and is considered a rare U.S. listing for a Canadian oil gas producer. Now, with SPACs, you normally don't see a lot of activity on the price of the share because it's not worth anything more than $10 until the deal is closed. But that's big news. Well, that's where warrants come in handy. They're alive and well and kicking. And most companies on the major exchanges have warrants and they're normally penny stocks. So their ticker is DCRDW. You just put a W on the end and that's its warrant. Sometimes there's a slash WS. But that's it. You can find the warrants of any company like that. And this one finished today at 52 cents with 173% gains. Somebody got to celebrate that good news. And there could be more activity on it tomorrow. Let's go take a look at that chart. So this is a six month, four hour chart for the warrant DCRDW. We got a high bubble back here almost six months ago of 97 cents. She has been under the 200 all this time. Hit a low bubble here about two months ago of 11 cents roughly. Bounced off it, got on top of her 50, has been hugging that all this time until today when she launched. And I mean every single thing is launched. The volume is launched. The uh, price bars have launched. Every single oscillator is launching. It all looks like it's all going to the moon. 20 day, one hour. Not a whole lot going on. Yesterday, she actually started to climb a little bit. Lots of activity, pre-market, after-market, and climbing all day. Ditto, this looks outstanding on the one hour. Five day, five minute. Yeah, there was some growth. She bounced off a low bubble yesterday. You can see she was just trying to get on top of the 50. Once she got onto the 50, look at how big that bar got, right? That's a token sign, I'm ready to run. And she took off. She's had a couple rolls. She's bounced off her 20 here. Looks like she might be testing it right now, as a matter of fact. Hit a high here of 56 cents from that 13 cent low yesterday. What are you looking at there? About 450% gains. From the close yesterday, uh, 
200% and she says 173. Yeah, she fell a little bit, but like all the stocks we've been looking at running on speculation, she's kept most of her gains. Nobody has thrown away 50% of their gains today. Technicals, they do look weak. They do look like they're dipping, not like they're falling, but they are cooling off right now. So I would expect a test on the 20, maybe even the 50 day. If it bounces off that 50 day, this may be a nice one to get into. If she comes below that 50, I wouldn't consider it. All right, there you go, folks. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. So hopefully you'll start making use of that current market page over at the OTC markets. I'm over there at least a dozen times a day, honestly, and I'm monitoring that trades column. I'm looking for stocks that are getting big numbers. That's how you can tell where the activity is at. So I monitor it all day, do my DD by looking at the news, the financials, Twitter, jump over to the charts, wash, rinse, repeat. I do that all day long and that's how I keep up with what's going on. Yeah, it keeps me busy, but it's amazing what you can find. Folks, DD is like gold mining. Yeah, you're going to sweat on the brow, but when you find that gold, it's well worth it. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.